The Empire's on the run. Find it. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. That's the only chance we've got to make them do their job. Using unparalleled research in the development of a synergistic formulation based around the key concepts of super oxygenation, the next level in cleansing is here. With key ingredients backed by real clinical studies, the new Oxy Powder, available through InfoWars Life, was invented during Dr. Group's research on the toxification of our bodies. Many herbal colon cleansers are harsh on the body and contain cheap and potentially dangerous ingredients, oftentimes full of synthetic fillers, GMOs, additives, or worse. Gently start cleaning your body with easy capsules that start working while you sleep. Oxy powder does not require time off work, and there's no need for bad tasting concoctions. Instead, Oxy powder slowly releases monoatomic oxygen into the intestinal tract and body. Experience the astonishing cleansing power of superoxide and ozonide technology. Go to InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com to get started with Oxy powder, or call 1-888-253-3139. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. When you're out on the road, the last place you want to be is on the road. But if the unfortunate happens, you'll be glad you were wearing diamond gussets. There's a place down in Tennessee where they make blue diamond gusset jeans. They so pride in every stitch. Guarantee you love the way they fit. They put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gussets got it. Others don't. We turn jeans inside out. Diamond gusset jeans. Made in the USA with unparalleled quality. Our Defender motorcycle jeans combine gusset comfort with Kevlar protection so you can ride all day with confidence. Order yours at gusset.com. Diamond gusset jeans got it. Others don't. Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. We're live on the Alex Jones Show this Wednesday, October the 1st, 2014, talking about the breaking Ebola news. Alex Jones is still on the line. We're still waiting to connect with Joe Biggs, who is live on the scene in Dallas. Uh, we've got Governor Rick Perry coming up with a press conference. And we're basically urging both Perry and our listeners to call the White House and urge them to cease all flights from West Africa into the United States. British Airways, this is an article from back in August, August 27th, out of the Daily Mail. British Airways halts flights to Ebola hit Sierra Leone and Liberia for the rest of the year. And it's not only Britain that did that over a month ago. Air France did the same. Emirates, the huge airline company out of the United Arab Emirates, also halted flights into the country from these Ebola hit countries. Yet now for more than a month, the United States failed to do so. We have the first Ebola patient now almost confirmation. I think it actually has been confirmed or at least the likelihood of a second Ebola victim, one of the family members of the individual that's there in the Texas Presbyterian Hospital, at which we've got our reporters live on the scene. But Alex, we're putting out the call 
uh, both for the for our listeners and for the media to urge the White House to order this cancellation of flights from West Africa because we've seen in an article from Defence One this morning, which is up on the Drudge Report, there's really no way to screen for Ebola at airports. Of course, we know it's got a three-week period where somebody could show no symptoms whatsoever. And the, the temperature scans that people could go through at the airports are basically completely useless, it's admitted. In this article, they didn't work back in 2009 for the swine flu outbreak. They're not going to work with Ebola. So the only solution, it seems, is to stop those flights coming in, Alex. Well, that's right, Paul. You're absolutely correct. And again... Our media is so lapdog, so controlled, so insane, so pathetic, that when we pointed out a month and a half ago we should cease flights, they attacked us in publications everywhere. This is what they do, because they want to get it in the country, get the crisis going, use it as a power grab, use it as a destabilization program, and then the feds and the globalists can, again, play the part of the saviors. This is a classic divide-and-conquer order out of chaos, Hegelian dialectic program, and there's no debating it. And so... But we had to get the phone number to the White House out, just so they know we know. We had to get the number out to Rick Perry's office. We've got our reporters there on the ground with their mic up on the stand. They're going to get a question into Perry in Dallas coming up at the start of the next hour. I don't care what break it is. We skip it once Perry starts speaking and going to those questions. Because this is so important. And, and it's not just because this is in Texas. But I was saying, you know, shut down the flights long before it hit my state and my hometown. This is a serious situation, to say the least, because if we don't get this contained, they will use it to take so much control, and it could really start spreading. And, of course, undoubtedly, if he was here for four days sick with Ebola, walking around around his family and so many others, I bet money that he's already given it to other people. Uh, you know, you said that last night in the special report that he undoubtedly will probably spread it. Now they're going to spread it to other people. And now thanks a lot, federal government. Thanks a lot for doing what you do so great. Uh, you know, you're not like Kiefer Severin in 24. You're a bunch of folks that burn down the business and collect the insurance money. And uh, I'll guarantee you, a lot of people that have gone along with this system are going to have their families affected by this one way or another, economically or physically, by the crisis this is going to create. There's still a chance of maybe to turn this around if they shut down more flights as it spreads exponentially around Africa. I mean, if you've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people now with it, and they say it's going to be millions, uh, and I guess we're just going to let the millions of people that are able to flee come here. I mean, hell, they say anywhere you are in the world, come here, we'll pay for everything. Why not announce? You know, it's politically correct. If you have Ebola, come here. We'll put you, you know, in a school next to some American kids. I mean, that's how over the top 2 plus 2 equals 5 is, and you didn't build your business and Obamacare is free, and all this other bull is, and no other nation would act like this or behave like this. We knew the fix was in when they started shipping Ebola patients into the U.S. We knew the fix was in when they didn't shut down the flights or didn't even try to screen people. We knew the fix was in, and now the hospitals won't even ask somebody who's sick uh, coming in from West Africa, from Nigeria, hey, were you around people with Ebola? This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. This is what America is, trained to lay down, trained to have no instincts. And by the way, it's not fear-mongering to warn people. If, if you see smoke coming out of your neighbor's roof, if you see smoke coming out of your neighbor's roof and you don't see them awake, you go and you bang on the door. Bob, you know, you know Carol or whatever their names are, get out of here. Your house is on fire. You call the fire department. That's taking action. Well, our government saw 50-foot flames shooting out, and they ordered gasoline thrown on it. And then now they're going to show up once it's burned down and do a press conference on the ashes with a bullhorn talking about how America came together and Homeland Security and Obamacare, you know, helped with the hundreds of thousands of Americans that got Ebola. These are the type of scenarios we're facing because the globalists are launching global destabilization plans. And you believe me, they're not going to stop here. If they're, if they're crazy enough to think they can get away with bringing in Ebola patients and letting people fly in from Africa or where countries are collapsing, while everybody else is controlling this, if they're going to do that here, they're going to do everything else. Katie, bar the door. Katie, bar the door. They are just, he's going to sign executive orders to take the guns. He's going to sign executive orders to end the borders completely. They're going to sign executive orders to shut down all the power plants. They're going to, they're going to do, and if you don't like it, an armored vehicle's coming to your house. Well, okay, fine. Those cops are going to have their kids die from Ebola, too. So 
everybody, go ahead. It's a suicide pact. Do whatever the New World Order says, run by a bunch of banks that have robbed us blind and hate our guts. Let's just submit to them and do whatever they say and let them set up random checkpoints on the highway and have the government listen to our phones of the Tea Party and harass pro-lifers. But we can't check people coming in from, from, from Ebola countries. This is how ridiculous it all is. Paul, I'm turning it over to you and Joe Biggs from Dallas and Josh Owens in Dallas. They're, they're courageous to go up there and be near the hospital. We got Rick Perry's press conference coming up with our questions and more. And if you're listening to this transmission, folks, you're not a bystander. You're in the arena. Get on the phone. Call the White House. Call Congress. Call the media. Call Fox News, CNN, and say, listen here, you little chicken-necked establishment state-run media whores, you prostitutes. We expect you to ask Rick Perry and to ask Obama and to ask the White House press secretary, why haven't you shut the flights down? Why are you bringing Ebola patients here? But no, you don't question. That's being a conspiracy theorist. You sit there and you stick your head in the sand and you do whatever the government says. You people deserve everything you get in the government media and in the system if you don't speak out now, okay? Where are your survival instincts, dumbasses? And I don't mean to use those type of words lightly, but that's what it is. Get up off of your butts. Stop being morons and get involved and realize we aren't alarmists. We're realists here. We know what we're talking about. We immerse ourselves in this. We're committed to freedom. We're committed to America. We're committed to the republic. We're real, folks. And the reason we see so, so, so alien, the reason we see so, so weird to a bunch of domesticated serfs is because we've turned into jellyfish slaves. And so when people act like real Americans or people act like real Westerners or people that have basic survival instincts, we're called a bunch of scum. No, we're not. We tried to stop this, and now it may get out of hand, and I'm sure we'll get the blame for it in the end. Paul Watson, God bless you. It's up to you, listeners. It's up to you to get the horror media up off their butts and to, and to ask real questions to put heat on these politicians so they can't basically have a joint suicide pact with everybody to bring Ebola into this country. And even if this doesn't get out of hand, and I hope it doesn't, what does it say about these people's mindsets? What does it say about how they operate? That they would try to do this, obviously try to get Ebola going in the country, so Obama could act like a Savior. He is Barack Obola from now on. President Obama is Barack Obola. God bless you all. There goes Alex Jones. And remember, it was President Obama who said that Ebola, it would be, quote, unlikely for Ebola to arrive in the United States. And of course, we were called conspiracy theorists and fear mongers for weeks on end. In fact, CBS News wrote an article attacking Infowars, attacking me directly after I appeared on the Michael Savage show, simply to go through some of the evidence that Ebola could have mutated, it could have gone airborne. And we were attacked, we were demonized. Now, the media is basically trying to downplay this, the CDC is trying to downplay it for obvious reasons to prevent hysteria. But I think there's also another reason why they're trying to downplay it. And that's because they've dropped the ball completely. They've been caught with their pants down. The health authorities there in Dallas, this individual came into the hospital with Ebola symptoms. They gave him antibiotics and sent him on his way without asking any questions whatsoever about his travel history. He had come from Liberia, which of course has been ravaged by Ebola. In fact, Anthony Fauci, the head of the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Diseases, he told CNN this morning, I was watching this in the hotel room, that it was, quote, an enormous red flag that they didn't ask this individual about his travel history, given that he's obviously, you know, he's a black gentleman, he's come from Liberia, he's obviously got a foreign accent, he's got Ebola symptoms. They gave him antibiotics and sent him home, and for a total of four days, he was wandering around Dallas and God knows where else. Uh, infecting other people, potentially, they're now talking about a second Ebola case. The uh, Health and Human Services official has indicated that a second case is probable. And here we have the article from prisonplanet.com. Texas Ebola patient was sent home for two days with antibiotics. So he went to the hospital, uh, they gave him the antibiotics, they sent him home. No questions asked. The Associated Press reports that the man who traveled from Liberia to Dallas on September 20th was dismissed from the Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital on the 26th after seeking care. He was evaluated and given a prescription for antibiotics with hospital workers believing he had some other ailment. So 
again, they completely dropped the ball on it, yet we've been called fear mongers and conspiracy theorists for the best part of two months for simply warning about this situation arriving in the US, which it now indeed has. And of course, Obama said it was unlikely, and even Chris Matthews last night on MSNBC got in a 